Cornerbacks, check. Safeties, check. Edge rushers, check. Defensive line, check. Only thing we probably have to worry about still is inside linebacker, but we'll talk about that later because right now, thanks to Omar Khan, I think our defense is looking pretty damn good. Yeah, the reason I said we could check off defensive line as something we don't really have to worry about for the rest of this offseason is because the Steelers are bringing back defensive tackle Larry Ogunjobi on a three-year deal at $28.75 million that will pay him $21.75 million in the first two years, per source. Cam Hayward's happy about it. I'm happy about it. I think you guys should be happy about it as well. This is just another good move this offseason. Another one. Yeah, there's a reason that I wanted Ogan Joe be back. I feel like he's just a damn good football player. It was a stabilizing force for this defensive line last year. I don't think it was a coincidence when Ogan Joby wasn't here in 2021. We were the worst rush defense in the league. And then in 2022, we were probably like top five or six. And we also had a Brian Flores come in as a coach. We signed Miles Jack. But we can all admit our D-line was absolutely Swiss cheese in 2021. So a combination of Cam Hayward playing better and better as the season went along last year, getting back to that Pro Bowl, All-Pro level, and Ogunjobi, as I said, just being that steady guy from week one all the way through week 18 were a part of the reason why. Also considered, too, Ogunjobi wasn't really healthy last year. Every damn week he was popping up on the injury report with a toe or something, and then he'd go out and play and ball out. Like, he would have been a Chicago Bear. He signed a multi-year, you know, double-digit type of deal with them, but didn't pass the physical. That's why he was available to us. We got him on a one-year deal for like $8 million bucks. Played good this season, and then, yeah, full circle, we ended up signing him to that multi-year deal he was seeking with the Bears. Uh, the contract, a little bit more than what I was hoping for. Got over $9 million per year. I was hoping for like 7 or $8 million, but I feel like this is still fair market value, obviously. And just based off the wording on Schefter's tweet, I feel like this deal is going to age well for the Steelers because $21 million are going to be allocated in those first two years. So I'd assume there's going to be an easy out for the Steelers going into that third year if Ogunjobi is not living up to the contract. But the good thing about this is, though, Ogunjobi isn't really that old. He's in his late 20s, and defensive tackles can age well. We're seeing how Cam Hayward's been playing. He's playing his best football, actually, into his 30s. Uh, that was one of the things I was a little worried about when he signed that four-year extension, you know, three, four years ago, whatever it was. But he's playing his best football. And we really didn't see signs of Ogan Joby playing bad football at this point. He was playing good, and he was hurt. So I'll be pumped to see him a full offseason in the Steelers program and getting fully healthy for this 2023 season. The question is now, uh, what do we do going forward? I don't think we got to do anything crazy. We're just methodically going about our business, hitting every position of need. Uh, today, we got our O-line depth or potential guard starter uh, starting safety across from Minka, and that's not barring Edmonds coming back or not, because if Edmonds doesn't come back, we could just roll with Casey. Uh, also, defensive line with Ogan Joby, and then we got our CB1 with Cam Sutton leaving. So what's next? Uh, inside linebacker. I guess that's it. I just don't think we have to do anything crazy. It wouldn't kill us if we just brought back Spillane because don't forget, we have four draft picks in the top 80. So if we brought back a Spillane and then we drafted a dude in the second round or third round, what if we got like a Drew Sanders or a Jack Campbell, Damarian Overshone or a Trenton Simpson? Okay, you mean to tell me you wouldn't be fine with a Trenton Simpson Miles Jack, Mark Robinson, and Robert Spillane room, like that would be fine with us going into next season. As long as we got all the other positions filled, which is pretty much what we're doing, I guess we could address nickel corner, get a specialist out there. But again, we still have the draft. I think there's one or two positions we could be looking at, make a little bit of a play here. But again, I, I don't think we got to go overboard because of the draft coming up. Some people might mention left tackle. What are we going to do about left tackle? All right, we could draft one. Like, literally, hear me out here. Hear me out. We could get an extra cornerback in the draft. Like, let's say we get Joey Porter Jr., first pick. Second pick in that second round, or it would be the first pick. It would be our second overall pick, but 
first pick in the second round, the 32. Uh, we could get Broderick Jones. Could he fall to that point? I don't know if he will or not, but you get an offensive tackle right there. And then second pick in the second round, you get a linebacker, Jack Campbell, Simpson, whoever. And then you still got your third round pick. Is that where you could address slot corner? So, yeah, I think uh, we're in a really good spot right here, man. Shout out to Omar Khan, wheeling and dealing. I don't know where our cap situation is because we were like $10 million in cap space, I believe, before this whole tampering period started with the Patrick Peterson deal, with the deals that we just got done today. We're probably in the negatives, but there's still an Akella Witherspoon cut that could be made. There's still some other restructures out there. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we make more moves. We obviously got to still fill out the roster with minimum type of guys. But I, I'd be fine if we didn't go veteran inside linebacker. Obviously, I'd be cool if we did. But, man, we could just bring back Spillane and, I think, be on our way. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. These are just some of my initial reactions. But, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed another edition of Big Deke News on a Tuesday. Stay tuned for more, and peace.